Hi everybody, welcome to Bourbon Battles. Joe's gonna be with us in just a second. You idiot. What? What are you doing? I'm going unicorn hunting. What the hell's the headlamp for? Are you stupid? When do you, you hunt unicorns at night? Uh, don't you ever do that? No. You know why? I'm a unicorn killer. A unicorn killer. Certified. You gotta take up the unicorn hunting. Yep. Welcome to you uh welcome to Bourbon Battles where I'm Joe. Okay. Hopefully you've been watching along from right in the middle of the Unicorn Killer series. If uh Dikembe here wasn't so tall, you'd be able to see our new uh unicorn up there. That's almost like a colored horsey. It's a horsey. Speaking of horsies, what do you think we might have in store for the Unicorn Killer series today? My guess would be something in a horsey. Something with a horsey. We don't like to show the bottles beforehand because you can tell how dark they are, but we'll do this. Do, 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 do. Horsies, horsies. What in the world could we be putting up against the horsies today? Stay tuned to find out. Hopefully everybody had a good Christmas. Did you get any whiskey for Christmas? Um, I didn't get any for Christmas, but, you know, I went up north. And my last time I went up north in the summer, I didn't find anything. But this time I had some pretty good luck. Um, I found a couple bottles of Booker's, which Southern Glaciers have obviously decided Indiana, at least Central Indiana, is not a good market for that. So you have to go to Wisconsin or... Did you get the one you were looking for, the new one? Mm-hmm. Bardstown Batch? I got that one also. Is that not the new one? What's the new one called? No Strangers. No Strangers. Have you tried them? Uh, I've tried the Bardstown. I'm guessing it's pretty tasty. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's just interesting that you have to go out of the state of Indiana to find something that used to be on the shelf everywhere, and it's because it doesn't belong to the... the... Is your phone ringing again? Yeah. Oh, for crying out loud. Is that Mike? No. Uh. <laughs> Goodness Sorry gracious. Did you get anything else? Um, I did. <clears throat> I got... Uh, Got a couple bottles of Ancient Ancient Age, that which is also not to be found in the state of Indiana. That's a unicorn for us, I'd say, even though it's a cheap one. Yeah, it's a cheap unicorn, but it is a unicorn. Um, I, I think it's delicious. I got a bottle of, uh, I got a bottle of 107 for Christmas, and I picked up a bottle of 1792 12 year for you, but I did not bring it. That, I'm very excited to try that. My wife got me that Maker's Mark set. It's pretty good business. We got a lot of um, Maker's Mark private selections. You too. find a bunch of them? Yes, <laughs> right of them. That's enough yeah. for a week's trip. Yeah. Uh, now, have you heard about this? I'm not going to get it out, but the Bell Mead Reserve. My wife picked me up a bottle of that for Christmas. She knows I really like it, and supposedly that's going distillery only. If anybody knows anything about that, put it in the comments because I'm curious. A liquor store put that out on their website. It is in a lot of places in Ohio and Michigan. I do know that. I know it's... On it, almost every shelf that I looked at. Very reasonable here, like at Costco and whatnot. It's fantastic if you haven't had it. The uh, reserve... It good? It's delicious. The reserve is really good. They're cast strength. So so basically what we got going on today, you want to get into it? Before sure. Before we go over too long? We're going to do the horsey, you know. Hey, go back to one of the first episodes Chad and I did where we battled Blanton's before we are doing the Unicorn Series against Evan Williams, Bottle and Bond. And I'm going to tell you who the winner is. You have to go figure it out yourself. It's one of the best episodes we've done. But today, we're going to battle the horsies against plain old Elijah Craig Small Batch. They are 94 proof, and Blanton's, I think, is 93 proof. That is correct. Let's get into it. We don't know which is which. Do you know why we don't know which is which and why we drink them blind here at Bourbon Battles? I don't. Because at Bourbon Battles, we don't give a rat's ass what's on the label. We just like good whiskey. And we're not going to talk about cardamom and citrus hints and all this bullshit that doesn't even really fern exist. Leaves. You get fern leaves in that? <laughs> is this one number one? Today, we're going to go left to right like you read, one and two. That's good. We should do that every time. We ought to. I don't get much. I get no ethanol in number one. Is 
does have a little bite though. Oh, there's some water down here if you want to play with that. Mm. What do you think so far, bud? Does that say Old Forester 1915? Yeah. Is that a blend between 20 and 10? Yeah, it's a marriage of two great bourbons. You want to try it? No. Nope. <laughs> I'm out. We'll try it sometime, but not today. The reason I did that, one of our viewers, and I'll have his name when we do the episode, asked us to do an episode on that. So I got a little half pint, and you mix 1910 and 1920, 50-50, you come up with 1915, oh. it's supposed to be with the bee's knees, the cat's ass. I have a question. Let's hear it. I'm just putting that out, this out here, but since Brown Foreman is one of the biggest distillery conglomerates in the world. That's right. Why wouldn't they just do it? Yeah, if it's that good. We're going to find out in an episode. You got to let, let it soak together for... Like a week or two. Is that right? That's what he said. You'll try it, won't you? Yeah, I, I mean, we could take. <clears throat> I've seen I've seen people take Weller Twelve and Weller One Hundred Seven and make what they call poor man's pappy too. Have you had it? No. Probably tastes just like pappy because that's what it is. I don't know about that. Yeah, <laughs> that is what it is. But, yeah. Yeah. Weller is good to drink, but it is. Bottom shelf whiskey, no matter what anybody thinks. And I don't care what anybody says. Antique 107 is one of my favorite whiskeys in the world. I love it, but it is, it's not fancy whiskey. It doesn't have a horse on it. Is your phone ringing again? Sorry, I'll go shut it off this time. Is that Mike this time? No, quit asking that. He's been putting comments on Facebook asking why we ask that. You got a mouse in your pocket? Because I don't ever ask that. Ask him why I asked that. He should. Are we good now? No, no, no more, more interruptions? No more interruptions. <clears throat> I already know which one I think is better. I, mean, I, I do as well. Are you going to put water in them? Uh, maybe in a minute. One's better for your sinuses. One of these whiskeys? Mm-hmm. It's got Sudafed in it? <laughs> I don't know. See what water does here. I don't. Mm, that's a little too much. I don't think water hurts either one of them. Uh, probably. If you had to put water in one to drink it, it would be, it would be the opposite one that I'm going to choose as the winner. They're both good. Would you say that? I do like them both. Did you do anything good for Christmas? Did I get anything good? Did you do anything good? I ate about 15 ham sandwiches at a, I, my yeah, sister-in-law's house. I can house. tell. <laughs> Made myself sick. <laughs> Chad won't like me telling the story, but I watched him eat about 80 biscuits at the Loveless Cafe in Nashville, Tennessee one time. That's a true story. At my wedding. Made himself sick. I thought, well, I didn't get sick, but I thought you I was going to die. Probably would have felt better. Then we went out drinking whiskey at the bars with my brother and the rest of the clan. Very interesting. I think water makes, this is number one, right? I think water made number one a little better. Mm-hmm. I do too. It didn't hurt number two. Well, but I don't have to taste it yet. I can't answer that. Well, my opinion is it didn't help Slow or Slow down hurt there, Honcho. Mine's gone, bud. I'm just waiting on you. What a surprise. <laughs> yeah. You got one of those yet? Libby got that for me at Costco with that private select pine in there. No. That's not a private. It is a private select. Yeah. One, two, four, three, three. No, I don't have that. If you ever want to come off that, you just let me know. It's It's been opened. <laughs> you believe that? Can't keep from it. I'm out of whiskey, bud. So here's the thing. Let's hear, let's hear the thing. I think that 
I'm just going to tell you there, Adam, this one right here is n not nearly as good as this one without water. That's With water, I think this one is just as good as this one with water. I would agree with that 100%. Now, I will say that I would probably, if I were going to drink these neat, I would definitely drink this one. Which is how we judge everything, right? For the most part. Now... Everybody talks about Blant. I gotta have me a horsey. Spell Blanton's. Did you see those limited edition horsey toppers you can get on the internet webs? I did. Um, it's a good whiskey, and if go, you go to the distillery and buy all your toppers for a dollar ninety nine a piece, or soak them in whiskey and show your buddies how. You don't have to do that. Nobody cares. I don't care. Do you have the whole set? No. <laughs> do you even know which ones you have? No. Or what dump dates you have? No. This is a good premium whiskey. One of the first whiskeys that Elmer T. Lee came up with, going back and named it after the old Blanton fellow that he worked for. Do you know this whole story? I don't. Yeah, so he was tasked with the creative Was super it Albert Blanton? Yeah, Albert Blanton had this thing where dignitaries would come down to Buffalo Trace, wherever the hell it was at at the time, and he would give them... I think it's where it is now. Same place? I believe so. It's only been there for about oh, 140 years. Yeah. So he was tasked with it. He came up with the idea way back then. Let's create a premium whiskey out of single barrels and give it to the dignitaries. Elmer T. Lee took the idea and run sometime later, named it after old Albert. Hence this grenade style bottle with horsies on top. Get all the horsies. They spell Blanton's. Spin around in a carousel or get real drunk and spin around the room and they look like the horsies riding to victory. If that's your thing, cool bottles and everything, it's a great whiskey. What everybody talks about with Blanton's is how smooth it is. It's smooth because it's low proof, lower proof. I don't even necessarily, I wouldn't even, I would not even call it smooth, even though I don't like to use the word smooth. I would not say that it's yeah. easy to drink, neat, especially, is this Blanton's? Is we don't have it revealed them yet. Well, I'm, I'm going to make the assumption I, that this is. I would as well. Um, and I could be wrong. Now, if you, if you collect whiskey and you're going to have 10, 20, 30 bottles, whatever you're going to have, this is a must have for your collection. Would you agree with that? If you like it. If you like it. But the, the thing about it is people are so crazy for it that uh, somebody who who grew up drinking uh, whatever, but wants, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be cool because they're going to have their buddies over. They want a bottle of Blanton's. And I talk about it all the time. One of the reasons I like collecting whiskey is Chad, who has his own whiskey, can come over here and there's something in this room that he doesn't have and would probably like to try. And for normal people that don't collect whiskey, maybe have a couple, they come over and what they're going to say is, oh my gosh, you got Blanton's, I want to try it. That's why I love to have Blanton's on the, on the shelf. Well, it's good. It's good <clears throat> for people who are thinking about getting into whiskey too, I think, to be able to try it and think, you know what, that's great. Or you know what, I don't think that's as good as I, it should be. It's, a, it's a, my opinion, you can get it at retail, which is extremely difficult to do. You can go to the distillery and get lucky. Um, if you're getting it at the distillery, you're not getting it at retail. Like ten dollars more, right? Close enough. Horseshoes and hand grenades, bud. Mm -hmm. But anyway, hand it's, grenade bottle with horseshoe, horseshoes on top. Yeah, and you can spin it around on a carousel, right? And I don't mind. I mean, people like it. That's good. Yeah, you know, Dan loves it. He, there's a lot of people love it. Now, what we're Let's reveal them. Let's reveal them, yeah. This was a contender. Let's see what's what here. Number one, which... This was number one, right? Oh, we didn't pick. I'm going to say one of these is a little better. I'm going to say one's a lot better. That'd be, uh, yeah, I get that. You want to reveal I'm going to say this one. Is this number two? Yeah, I'm picking number two. I'll say this one's a lot better. Yeah, and I say a little better. So, so number one, which did not win, is the Blanton's. So Chad and I both picked the Elijah Craig. What's very interesting about this, as far as Indiana, Kentucky, Tennessee, and every place I've ever been, probably Michigan. Um, Village so Pantry. Every every place you go has got Phillips this. Sixty six. See, they're everywhere. And Meyer. We don't talk about prices on this show, but it's about half the price. If you can find this at retail, which is extremely difficult. If you did find it at retail, this is half the price. And look, we both said it. This is a far better whiskey. Well, I've thought for a long time Elijah Craig Small Batch was a unicorn killer. Not only to this one, but <clears throat> oh. to numerous other ones. I mean, but the, that being said, it's kind of unfair because I'm extremely partial to 
Heaven Hill distillate. So, and I, I love Heaven Hill. It's not my favorite, but it's right there. Um, you know, if you go back to the episodes we talked about earlier, Evan Williams bottled and bomb beat this, which is another Heaven Hill product. Um, we ought to do Elijah Craig small batch versus Evan Williams bottled and bomb one of these times. You have an opinion on what might win that? I don't. It, it would be a good one, even if we just do it for us and not on a show. Uh, don't know where you live. Don't know how hard this is to find, but I'm guessing it's extremely difficult to find. My only thought is if it, if if you're unless you're just dying like somebody's forcing you to get a bottle of this, just go buy a bottle of this. It's just as good. It's better. I think it's better myself, but to each his own. Um, this one you're going to spend a lot of time, gas, energy, money that you don't need to spend. And you're probably going to pay more than retail for it. Well, even if you don't, it's just, it's it's, un, it's unnecessary energy wasted. Because eight years ago, ten years ago, they couldn't sell it. Sit on shelves full of dust. Right. You know why? Because nobody wanted it. Not that good. Well, I don't know if I'd go that far. I mean, I don't think it's bad, but I just, I think there are things that are far better for, that are far more acquirable and far more affordable. That's all. Now, one thing that we have seen in our Facebook threads and people have contacted us through YouTube, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of people want to see what beats the old horsies. So this will not be the last time you see the horsey. And that's because people are not going to beat their head against the wall trying to find this when there's stuff that's just as easy and just as good. Yeah. It's that simple. People want to know what what's better than that that I can just go pick up. And we're going to show you. Stay tuned for episodes to come. I mean, the, the really the only difference you're going to get is you've got a batch versus a single barrel. So this bottle, whatever barrel this came out of, this bottle is going to be different maybe than the next bottle. But at this point in time, they're so close because they've been doing it for so long. All the barrels are basically going to have the same tasty notes which is the same thing with the small batch so if you're dead if you love single barrels these are not hard to find single barrel store picks proof down to 94 right and i don't notice a drastic difference in these i've got one that's pretty stinking good that i can maybe tell a difference in but hunt that a little bit go find a store pick of small Elijah craig it's great it's the ones i've got are the same price as the retail do you have any a couple yeah, they're great. Elijah Craig's great stuff. Blanton's good stuff. And got a horsey on it. Hey, leave us a comment on wherever you found this. I'll see it. We'll get back to you. We want to know, what do you want to see against Blanton's? What's your opinions of this? Do you think we're absolutely batshit crazy? Or do you agree? What do you want to see in the Unicorn Killer series? What do you want to see it go up against old Forrester Birthday Bourbon? 1792, 12 year. What do you want to see go against that? One thing I would recommend, too... <clears throat> if you're hellbent on them, but getting a bottle of blends, then you should do it if, if you can. But if you're doing it so you can have people over and drink it, have people over and drink that blind versus the Elijah Craig blind. I think you bring up a great point. And if you do that, you're going to be overwhelmingly surprised at the results. Drinking blind, there, there's a reason method to our madness. Have your friends over and drink blind. Have somebody set it up. I. I do it a lot, all the time with different people. Drink these, rate them. People are usually pretty surprised at what they pick. Yep. Uh, we'll do 1792 Sweet Wheat and Maker's Mark here pretty soon. You're not going to know about it, but we are going to do it. I already know what to win. Good. Then we don't have to talk about it anymore. Yeah. Hey, follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, all that stuff. Let us know what you want to see in the Unicorn Killer series. Or let us know what you want to see in anything. We're going to do a rye. We're going to do some ryes. We're going to do Indiana distillates. If you just want to see, hey, I do a George Dickel bottle and bond. We've already done it. But you want to see something, let us know. We'll try to work it in. Old yeah, I've got some single malt scotches I want to start doing, too. They got the cigarette ash taste in no. them? No, oh, they good. don't. That stuff's awful. You know, I'll have the guy's name that asked for the Old Forester 1915. We're going to do that on an episode here real soon. I guess it's got to soak for a while. You want to see it? We'll make it. What's it soaking in? Glass? Yeah, they got to fester to get. I don't know, but I'm just following directions. That's you, the first time in your life you've ever followed directions. What are you talking about? Have you ever met yourself? <laughs> That's a stupid question. You want to go unicorn hunting later?
At and night, we got to have headlamps. We'll go down to Atterbury. <laughs> I think there's some down there. Hey, drinking bourbon is supposed to be fun. Do it with your friends. Do it blind with your friends. Try that out. We want to know how that goes for you. Have a little party. Drink some whiskey blind. Let us know. But don't drink and drive. No. And if you drink blind, you could get a person who would not ever normally drink whiskey to maybe drink whiskey and like it. So... You know what's really funny? It's the story of my wife. Take a Blanton's lover, let him drink it blind against this, and tell him to pick the winner. Yeah. See what happens. You might be surprised. Hey, until next time, I'm Joe. I'm Chad. Cheers. Thanks, guys.